Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. All right, everybody, welcome to the bench. Today I'm going to tie you up Kaylee's Comet, named after my daughter Kaylee, and she likes to choose the colors for a lot of our flies that we tie, and uh, this one's for her. Uh, make sure you have these materials ready before you tie. So we use 6 aught red thread, 35 mil Waddington shank, 730 seconds dumbbell eyes, some Semperfly extreme string in silver, Semperfly plus chenille, some 50 pound braided suffix for the trailing wire, some Semperfly predator fiber in white, bait fish emulator flash, and just a little bit of polar chenille for the hotspot, and a nice big barbless hook. So once you got your shank fully secured into the vise, just build up a nice big thread base up and down the whole shank. I always like to keep my the shank, the front of the shank pointed upwards, especially for any streamers that you're going to be pulling off the bottom. You want them to, when you're stripping them, you want to be pointed upwards instead of down. Now take a little bit of I like to use some suffix, braided fishing line, take about six inches off of uh, off the spool. It's a little bit more supple than trailing wire, so it, uh, it moves a little bit better, especially when you're using it to put a little bit of tail action into the fly body. And make sure that when you put the loop on, you leave it far enough back that you can pass the trailing hook through it. So that way, if you ever happen to have a hook that gets dull or dented from banging it through the rocks all the time, you can swap it out and the fly body still stays good. Now with most of my streamers, I do like to tie the eyes on the underside of the hook. Make sure that we keep everything oriented upwards and down and then even when you put the, the trailing hook in at the end, try to make sure that the hook is pointed up to keep it a little bit safer for longer out of the rocks. And just figure eight the barbell eyes in. All of these guys are always really important to make sure that you get a really good hard lock. So you want to be firm enough with the thread without quite breaking it. So that's that game we play a little bit. And once the eyes are in nice and securely, I take the extra couple minutes just to put a dab of UV glue on there and make sure they stay that way. So now that our eyes are on, nice and safe, bring the thread all the way to the back. Now to fill the body in this between the body of the fly and the trailing hook, which is going to have its own extended body, we're going to do both of the rear with the extreme string. Now Gary Hankey from Semperfly showed me this cool little trick with this stuff where you can take your dubbing loop spinner and you put it through the center core of the fiber. And for this we're only going to need to fill in this little one inch and a half, inch and a quarter gap. So you take about double that length and just spin it. Just spin it a couple times. And then once you put your finger in the middle, double it back, take your bobbin loop, double loop spinner out, it twists against like a little piece of rope. And it forms a nice little wiggly body. So we're just going to put this to cover in that dead space in between the main body of the fly and the trailing hook. Then we just take a little bit of plush chenille in white and it's got a little bit of UV f color to it and just build a really small body but mostly it's kind of like of an intruder post to keep everything from collapsing on itself once we start building the main strands of the body. So we just cinch a little bit of this stuff in, go behind it twice and bring it forward only a quarter inch couple wraps of that, keep peeling it back, so 
builds up this nice little post. And go behind it once and again. Just to add a little bit of extra glitter and flash to this thing, a little tiny bit of bait fish emulator flash goes a long way. So we're going to bring this guy just forward about an eighth of an inch and cinch a little bit of this stuff in. And I've pretty much every fiber I use, I make sure I go behind it to lock it in place. This three inch long strand can be a little bit rowdy to deal with, but definitely worth your time to get it just right. And just try to keep the fibers pointed to the rear and just spin it three times. And this really adds a lot of flash without needing to add a bunch of crystal flash and all that to the fly. Now we use a little bit of the polar chenille, just for a little bit of a hot spot. And yeah, my daughter Kaylee said that this one looks like a comet because of images that we've seen about the stars. And, and most of the, those comets have a little bit of blue. I've also done the same pattern with red or chartreuse and other different hot spot colors. But being the fact that she really likes to have a lot of input in these colors, and we're going to go with her pattern today. Just a handful of wraps of this makes a nice little hot spot. Keep peeling them back and then finish it off, making sure to go behind it a couple times. Now predator fiber is a really nice hydrophobic material that builds a lot of bulk really quickly, so you don't need to use a lot. The less is more in this world, so I just like to peel off small amounts and really small amounts. So. This stuff is actually 24 inches long when you unfold the whole fiber, but I never use anything more than half of the strand and just build up different sizes. Nice and slowly, you can always add more later if you like. So once I've cut it, I build everything a little bit backwards first. So I just put a little tuft, only about the same amount as that polar, polar chenille, only about an inch long, and just cinch that in. And try to be really careful to keep everything on the top half of the fly above those eyes. And then you lift the front, come around it underneath a little bit by about an eighth of an inch. Cinch that in one more time and then come back over top of it. And we want to leave this right now until we decide on the final length of our fly. The bull trout like a really big meaty meal, so they're not scared to eat a seven, eight inch fly. So we're just going to leave this a little long and we can kind of trim everything else at the end of it. So once we got that first little loop, we're going to do the same on the bottom side as well. And we're going to build a little bit of a belly. So the top side we're building a bit of a back, and the bottom side we're building the belly. So it doesn't have to be quite as long, but for simplicity, we start with the same length again. Pull it up to have a good look at it. So this is the one up over top, and this is the one for the belly. Cinch that in nice. And here I'll probably just trim a little bit of the belly off, and I like to keep it on a nice angle so it tapers off on a smooth wispy motions and I'll use this extra fiber just to build a little bigger head profile at the front and pull that back again so that's starting to generate a nice good size profile without collapsing on it we're going to bring everything again once more to build it even more but we're going to focus more on the back this time so grab another small amount of predator Build another Schroeder one, just a little bit longer than the other. Cinch it in right behind the eyes. And come around underneath the eyes and then down forward as well.
So that's it for the main body. And we still have to put a trailing hook on and we want this to be a nice meaty meal. It still doesn't cast too heavy. So that's the main body of the, of the fly. Pop this guy out of the vise. Get him here for later. Grab a nice sharp barbless hook. This one's a little bit big, but as you've seen maybe on earlier or present shows right now, then we do have some pretty big mouths to fill. So a little big hook actually uh, isn't a bad thing in some circumstances because a lot of these big guys really like a large meal. So uh, this one's actually a two watt. We've done them everything from size two, size one, or everything, everything in between. But we want to make sure we use nice strong hooks because some of them, when you get that fish of a lifetime, you want to have everything lined up to make sure you get the best chances possible to land the big guy. So I'll build up a nice little bit of thread on this. You don't have to be too concerned with this one as well. This one's going to be nice and simple for the tail. And it's just an extension of the body to make sure. As I always say, I like to keep my hooks right in the middle of the fly because bull trout are known to be a side attack predator. So we grab some more extreme string and find the center cord on that. Stab the loop spinner right through the center cord. Then you pull off about 10 or 12 inches. The longer the string, the more you twist it. So keep spinning that around, spinning that around, spinning that around until you feel it's getting nice and tight. For these long ones, it can be a little more difficult. But you try to keep that finger in the middle and then you can pull your dubbing loop spinner down to get right back to that 10 inch mark. And once you keep those together, when you let go, everything spins up on itself. So it forms a nice little rope and that's going to form a really nice super mobile tail that really swims really nicely in the water. And like we said, we wanted to keep it about three inches back from the hook to make sure it's nice and centered and just cinch that in. And like always go behind it a couple times, make sure it doesn't go anywhere you don't want it to. And bring the thread forward just a little bit, but make sure you leave at least a quarter inch worth of good hook shank right at the front for that trailing wire to cinch down on so it's not cinching into the fiber of the extreme string. Triple whip finish, and it's all done except for putting the two pieces together. I do like to build that nice big thread build up for a lot of good grip for that trailing wire to cinch onto. Trim that up. Then extend, like just pinch that trailing wire nice and close and it can just easily slip through that nice big hook opening, spreading it out open. And then as you take this out of the vise, I like to keep it in there just enough time, long enough to pass this through. When you get it through, pop the hook out and finish that through. Make sure that when this comes together, that your trailing wire is cinched up nice and tight. And you can primp this a little bit. So with the hook on the bottom, eyes up there. This, uh, this guy's going to swim nice and fishy. It looks a little bit rowdy right now, but when you see this thing in the water, if you're a bull trout, it's going in the hole. So they like to eat these nice big flies and this isn't such a wonderful spay casting fly, but that first time you snap it up into an overhead cast, into a back cast, it becomes really light and uh, it casts really nicely for, for something with such a large profile. So that's the finished Kaylee's Comet, and if you're in Bull Trout country, you're going to want to have one of those in your box.